Welcome to the Jared's show, Jared. in the house. Thanks for having me. Woo, album came out this week. Yes. You guys have been crazy busy this week, and you're hitting the road July 5th. Yep. Wow. It's a good week. It's a good week. It's been a long time coming with Cabin by the Sea, you know. From any port in a storm to now has been a, a long but a good road, so we're stoked. It's been thin since 2008, right? 2008, since yeah, because any port in a storm came out. And it, you know it did all right, but once Lay Me Down got on the rec on the radio and did so good that we re-released Any Port in a Storm, and the label wanted to just re-release it with one more song added, and we were like, "There's no way that we're going to do that." So we actually took all the B sides and all these other songs that we were working on at the time, and pretty much added a whole other album onto that, so that they'd get Lay Me Down and like other stuff, so we just weren't like ripping people off, you know. So uh, because you guys are very good to your fans. <laughs> exactly, that's no, what we cared right. about, and then uh, so. Yeah, that kind of rejuvenated any port in a storm, so we did tour off of that album for a while. Uh, but I think everything happened for a reason, and I think we got to grow as musicians and as uh, as singers and songwriters and just as people. And uh, I think it, it was perfect timing for Cabin by the Sea to come out. And so this album, you got some great collaborators. Right? Yes, you got, Del the Funky Hoops. Yeah, so you got did. Del, who I worked with back in the day from Lecter. Del is one of my favorite rappers, and that's such a cool story. I got to become friends with Danny Way, which is a skateboarding legend. I got to go visit him in Kauai while he was building this mega ramp. That right there already like is the coolest thing that I've ever said out loud. <laughs> and then uh, he's like, yo, I'm homies with Dell. You, sh you should get him on the song because we were looking for a rapper to get on Smoke Rings. And uh, so that's just like... That's like meeting if you're a basketball kid and you meet my, like you meet Michael Jordan and then he's like yeah come over to my house we're gonna go play basketball with Kobe Bryant like that's the equivalent uh, with right. with those two guys to right. me you know? so it was really cool and so you got Kamani Marley Arley how did he come how did he come in the picture well we have this song called Your Love and it's kind of like we were making jokes the other day it, it's kind of like moves like Jagger for stoners because like we call out Bob Marley in the hook, kind of like they call out Jagger. And uh, we were sitting around and be like, it would be really cool if we could actually get one of the Marley brothers. And like, big fan, big fan of all of them, big fan of Steven and, and, and Damien. But we just felt that Kaimani sounds so much like his dad and he's so soulful that he was the right one for this song. And uh, our friend Native Wayne hooked us yeah, up man, with him. Yeah, uh, Native Wayne. Yeah, and he... Uh, Maximum respect. Maximum respect for <laughs> Nathan Wayne. Him on the show. Yeah, he's great. He's a pistol. Yeah, he's good. And he got Kaimani and he, he loved the song and, uh, and you know, took it from here and took That's it great. There. Yeah. So you go on, on tour with Modest Yahoo, right? And yeah. Modest Yahoo's also on the record. Yeah, that was the, the, the cool thing about that song is it's Dance All Night. We, pro we got to produce it with Lewis Richards, one of the producers of the album. Modest Yahoo came in, who we become friends with over the years of touring. You know, we're kind of in the same vein. And uh, so he came in, loved the song absolutely killed the song and while we were in there for that for that writing session we were talking about what he was doing for the summer what we were doing for the summer his album was coming out in july ours came out in june he hadn't figured out we hadn't figured out we just wrote this crushing song and that's where the tour came out of so now we're gonna do uh three months with him in uh u.s and canada and we'll probably play that song every night and if you haven't seen modest yahoo Fantastic. I mean, I don't even care about the Dirty Heads. You can come after we play. <laughs> Literally, it's that good. His live, his live show and his live band, the Dub Trio, bonkers, like mind blowing. One of my favorite. Uh, yeah, he's incredibly live. soulful. Yeah. And so, when does the when is the, the tour kicks off? July. July fifth. Yep. On the East Coast. So we'll start on the East Coast, and then we fly back and play the Orange County Fairground with Steel Pulse on July oh, 27th. Wow. I, think yeah. coming, I think I'm coming right now. That's going to be insane. That's going to be Have legend. you played with them before? No, we haven't. That's so. insane. And, and at home in our backyard. Oh, my so. God. Yeah. They have uh, two of my favorite Desert Island discs uh, of all the records, you know? Like yeah. Their Earth Crisis and True Democracy yeah, Crisis, just yeah. ridiculous. It's, it's very so good. that'll be a hot show. Yep. That'll be good. And so. next time, you're going to come visit us with your full band, correct? Yeah, we're going to play full band, or we'll do acoustic. We'll do whatever you guys want. Oh, yeah. There's a couple covers See, that you wanted me to play. Dirty, we <laughs> love the Dirty Head so much. This is actually the first time We started time with the Dirty this... Head. We started with Dirty Head, and then we're going to move <laughs> to Dirty Head. This is the first time on the show we've actually had a singer, without a singer a band. and not I made them play. I appreciate that. You know, this is like... The vibe is can... so good, man, that you must so come good. back. The vibe is so good. We needed to have I you. I have this solo song that I've been working on. It's called I Want to Jack Off to Your Facebook Pictures. Wait, but we got to do that. Hey, yeah, man. Sup, this check is out my roll. lotion. I'm going to jack off to your Facebook picture, homie. Well, homie, that's weird. I don't want to jack off to any homie's Facebook pictures. Girlfriend, homie. Oh, my that God. That was you. I didn't even know it's about it. It's totally until... my fault. And for everyone watching, you have to go to YouTube and watch this. <laughs> <laughs> this video. It's a little pornographic, though. Yes. I'll just tell you. I, yeah, but you know, there's no, there's no limbs. Yeah. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> it's the internet. It's the interwebs. Anything goes. It's not the limb that you're it's thinking. It's the interwebs. Um, anything else that you want to tell us? 
Aside from the fact that you're going to cover, I want to jog off to your Facebook picture. That was the most important thing. That was the reason why I came here. That's it. As long as we got that done, we're good. Yeah, no, just go pick up the album and uh, hopefully come. <laughs> and uh, go see him on out. tour because they are you very. Actually, I did have shows. one question that okay, I have great. not asked yet. You know, you're from Huntington Beach. Your sound is like you mix reggae and hip hop and alt rock. Who were your big influences? When uh, you guys started out, um, obviously Bob Marley was a staple in my house with my parents. Like I'm born to two insanely hippie parents. Like I was born in my house because they don't believe in hospitals and all that stuff. Of like course. on the beach, two like Marley and Hendrix and stuff. So Bob Marley was huge. A lot of old classic rock. But when me and Dustin met, you know, heavy, heavy Beastie Boys, Sublime, things like that. Like bands where like I think the Beastie Boys really opened our eyes to like you could be in a <sighs> band and not worry about what you could cross genres it was the first like eye-opening thing like whoa one album's hip-hop and then they're doing an instrumental and then they used to be in a punk band like and they you know they mixed a lot of genres and and them and sublime really kind of opened our eyes to not being like we're just going to be this one type of band and i think we get really lucky with that because you know we have so much of a broader spectrum of songs that we can play right. that we're never like you have to play this one rock type of song you have to play this hip-hop song we get to you know, there's reggae songs and there's, you know, love, acoustic love songs and then there's like grimy hip hop songs, but they all seem to fit together and people accept us for that. So it's really cool. So we get to do a lot of different things. It's never boring being in the Dirty Heads, you know, and that's Well, and you've really never cool. lost your core audience, too, even yeah. though obviously some of your songs have really crossed over into pop. But like, We might lose some fans after uh, Jack off to your Facebook page. <laughs> But I'm not but you know, worried you about those it. Fans that's anyway. the price. You didn't want you those guys. That you pay. The if they can't beat take a joke, you know, get rid of them. If they can't take the joke, They're out. it's just the way it is. That's so, um, anyway, thank Jared, you so much, Jared. Thank you so much. Next time you come back, you bring in the band. I promise.